Well, uh, welcome to this online course on raw toad and cosmology. Uh, it's a semester course, so in principle, it last 15 weeks and uh, two lectures per week. So there are 30 lectures. And uh, uh, you may be concerned taking a math heavy course online, uh, but uh, uh, there are, of course, advantages for an online course. You can, you can study at your convenience. You got three o'clock in the morning. If you, you feel like listening to a lecture, you can do it. Uh, but also online, uh, actually, also because all the visual effect you can do and all the reference you can easily cite online. So, uh, for example, I always thought it's hard to talk the equations. But actually, online you can uh, copy and paste, so you can always move the related equation on the same place, and make a discussion much easier. So I hope uh, if I don't go too fast, you will find this online presentation very uh, useful. And also, uh, this online course has a special feature that is closely related to the textbook, so uh, you can. Uh, separate from each other by reading the book and the, the online presentation and uh, so that should make it a little bit easier too. Uh, and by the way, each lecture is typically divided into uh, three segments and uh, each segment would not last more than 15-20 minutes. So I think that should also make it a little bit easier. Uh, the first lecture bases introduction of the course, and uh, so uh, it's mainly we talk about the subject is the relativity as a coordinate symmetry. Okay. So put things in the proper context. Uh, there are two major advances in 20th century physics. One is, of course, quantum theory. The other one is general relativity. Uh, quantum theory, and especially uh, quantum field theory, uh, in the form of standard model particle physics, can describe strong, weak electromagnetic interactions, three of the four basic forces in nature, very well. And uh, general relativity is uh, turned out to be it's a classical field theory of gravity. And uh, uh, it's classical meaning that uh, it does not take the quantum aspect of the force into account. And so therefore, not surprisingly, the, the uh, forefront of theoretical physics now in the 21st century is quantum gravity. Uh, like superstring theory is an example of a candidate theory of such a, uh, uh, such a theory. And uh, from all point we know, such theory tends to be very uh, rich in structure, can not only accommodate gravitation, can can also describe strong weak electromagnetic like as well. So these theories are sometimes called the theory of everything. And of course, we really do not have such a theory yet, it's just only the most uh, attempt. And this course, of course, we are only talking about general relativity, the classical field theory. Now, GR has a reputation for being mathematically very difficult, uh, but I would like to hope for this course will demonstrate that if we take a so-called physics first approach, uh, really not necessarily that difficult. Uh, you introduce math gradually, only when it's well motivated by physics, and uh, uh, this way uh, balanced presentation theory and experiment will make the subject much easier because sometimes traditional GR courses you spend 80-90% of time first just learn running geometry and you a physics you may wonder where does physics where do I uh, but but they say we can actually restructure in such a way to make presentation much easier to understand. Also GR is the theory of gravity uh, of course, means Einstein theory supersedes Newton theory. 
and uh, uh, GR is uh, is really our best theory of gravity now, and it's key to our understanding of the cosmos on the grandest scale. Uh, this year, 2015, is also happened to be the 100th anniversary of when Isaac first succeeded formulating the GR theory, which we can date very precisely in November 1915. So there's all kinds of celebrations and meetings. And this science magazine cover is, uh, is a special issue of GR at uh, 100. It contains quite a few interesting articles that I recommend for you to read. So, uh, Einstein theory is supposed to super Newton theory. In what sense, it's uh, an extension of Newton theory. Uh, GR can describe, uh, not surprisingly, relativist particles. Uh, rel by relativist particle can move close to the speed of light. Uh, but also, GR is a theory of gravity. The gravitational fields are much can be much stronger than uh, Newton theory, and can have time dependence. It was Newton theory for gravitation for that's weak and static. In fact, in a cosmic neighborhood, for example, the solar system, the GI effects are very tiny. So therefore, you need special circumstances, you can do a very precise experiment to detect its effect. And only when you talk about black holes and cosmology, there you can routinely need the full power and I would say glory of GR. So now if the GR effects are so tiny in our cosmic neighborhood, how do we go about to discover GR equations? And uh, you cannot deduce a theory through many experimental observations, like the case of electricity and magnetism. And how, how, how does Einstein do it? How did he discover the GI equations without all the experimental observations? Basically, Einstein used what's called the symmetry principle as a guide to new physics. Okay. So the symmetry principle can restrict the type of equation you can allow to have. And uh, then if you require reduce Newton theory in the appropriate limit, turns out there are not many possibilities, and uh, this way Einstein arrived his GR theory of gravity. And we'll see, uh, relativity is a form of symmetry, in particular the coordinate symmetry. So let's talk about the principle of relativity. Uh, we are all familiar with experience sitting in a train, or in a, better sitting in an airplane, not able to feel the speed of the train or the plane when it's moving with constant velocities. This means there's no physical measurements can detect the absolute motion of inertia frame. There's nothing you can do. Uh, the physics law will really allow you to detect the absolute motion. So therefore, the basic concept of relativity, only relative motion is measurable in physics. This idea that uh, you cannot detect uh, uh, absolute motions actually goes all the way back to Galileo in the early 17th century when Galileo wrote the book, A Dialogue Concerning Two Chief World Systems. Uh, he was defending the Copernic system because people criticized it. You see, okay, if you say sun is the center of the, uh, our system, and the Earth going around, so the Earth must be moving high speed around the Sun. How come we don't feel it? Okay. And if Galileo had no train or airplane to illustrate this point, uh, he came with the idea, uh, the thought experiment, of an observer below the deck in a ship. The observer is not able to tell whether the ship is docked or is moving smoothly through water. Okay. And it was this kind of theoretical argument he said you cannot measure absolute movements. That's why we are not aware the Earth is moving around the Sun. And also, another way of saying that we cannot detect effect motion is to say the law of physics is not changed in a moving frame. Okay. So that's relating raw totally to a symmetry in physics. So what is symmetry in physics? By symmetry in physics, we mean we have the same physics after some changes. 
it was, we have the same field of the equation after some transformations. So for example, by coordinate symmetry, we may have the same physics equations after making a coordinate transformation to a uh, uh, by coordinate system, we mean the same as frame of reference or reference frame, or by observer. They're all the same thing, different ways of saying the same thing. And so in this way, we can distinguish between special relativity and general relativity. By special relativity, we mean that we have the same physics in all inertia frame of reference. And general utility is the same and we say we have the same physics in all reference frames, including inertia and accelerated frames. Okay. So in other words, is speciality is special because we still restrict the reference frame to inertia frames, not all frames, but to inertia frame alone. So the question is, what are the inertia frames? Let's remember uh, Newton's two laws of, of uh, the first and second law of motion. Okay. Which first law says, in an inertia frame of reference, a particle, if not acted on by other objects, will continue its motion with constant velocity, including the state of rest. In which if you don't do anything, it will stay put. And the second law, of course, F equal to MA. Now, why are these two laws of motion so important. Uh, <clears throat> well, I can answer that uh, by remembering the goals of physics is to have the simple description of nature. Meaning, we want a set of physics equations that can describe the widest amount of uh, phenomena. Yeah. In which we have the same physics equation described an apple falling on Newton's head, the same equation describes moon going around the Earth, the same equation describes the Earth going around the Sun. We don't need separate equations, separate laws for them. They all have the same uh, equation. So that's an example of simple description of nature. And so therefore, to, in order to have simple description, we need the right kind of place, concept to do it. Okay. So therefore, the first law basically says, importantly says, the physics is simplest if you describe the physics in an inertia frame of reference. But what is inertia frame reference? In fact, inertia frame reference is defined by the first law, in the meaning that inertia frame reference is a frame in which a particle not acting by others it will continue its state of motion, constant state of motion. So, uh, so in a sense, it's defined. But of course, then trivial statement is that the inertia frame exists in our universe. Okay, it doesn't have to be. Such frame exists, and if you would describe physics in this kind of reference frame, things are simple. Okay. In practice, of course, frame reference are frames with constant velocity with respect to fixed stars or distant galaxies. And why distant stars? Why, uh, why fixed stars? Well, there's something called a Mach's principle because Mach believed that uh, the mass uh, inertia had to do with the result from the interaction for all the objects in the universe. And inertia frame, in some sense, the average mass distribution of the, of the matter in the universe. And this, so there's always debate whether Einstein's general total theory uh, goes to, uh, was able to form a mass principle in mathematics. Now, F equal to MA can also be regarded as definition, is definition of force as the product of mass times acceleration. And so therefore the important second law is saying that the physics is simplest, the motion is simplest if the description concentrates on this product of mass, mass times acceleration. Okay. Like in other situations, uh, force may not be the most uh, useful concept. In quantum mechanics, we prefer to use Hamiltonian. By the way, the mass appears F equal to MA is another name for, for inertia, inertia, this inertia mass because it's a resistance to all forces. And it's somewhat uh, related but different from the inertia frame. Now the question is, how are the inertia frames related to each other? 
Okay, because remember we said that the rural total is quarter symmetry, the same physics under a core transformation special reality among inertia frames. So we need to make this transformation. So we need to know the relation between inertia frames. So at this end of the first uh, part of the first lecture.